Hello, all guys, gals, and non-binary pals. Welcome to the newest episode of the Noobs and Knockouts podcast, taped live on Twitch and brought to you on YouTube, on Spotify, on Google, and Apple Podcasts. I'm Austin. I'm a knockout. Watch a lot of wrestling. I'm David. I'm a noob. Haven't watched nearly as much of wrestling, and Tubi is now on the streaming service shit list. Yeah, okay. Because today we are doing Lucha Underground. We're back in Boyle Heights, baby! We are! But also, and I will explain, I'll talk more about it at the end of this first part, is that Tubi TV no longer carries Lucha Underground. So yeah. we've been hyping this up that you can get a free fucking account on Tubi and watch all of Lucha Underground for almost two years of this podcast now. Yeah. And it's gone. Yeah, and it's gone. Mm-hmm. It's it gonna sucks. Bring back, and it's gone. Yeah, that Fuck it off. sucks real bad. We have a solution that we are definitely going to bring to you, the people. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, that, comrades. Uh, our, our Lucha Underground comrades. Yes. But unfortunately, we are still very sad that this is that this is our first time watching um, Lucha Underground without 2B TV. It is uh, the end of an era, some will say. Uh, as you pointed out to me before we started recording, the uh, the end of an era that includes ads. So at least there's that. You know, a, a silver lining, if <laughs> ever there was one. No more shittily placed ads in the middle of segments. <laughs> Those yeah. are so, those were kind of charming though. It, it was it was not we it it felt almost ritualistic for us to be sitting there and to have a random cutaway to a fucking Krograd or something and just had the both of us giving uh slightly dispirited boos to the to the to the TV for it. I I I, I did find some some comfort some solace in it. Yep. But tonight we will be returned. We are back to Lucha Underground. Last time we did episodes 27 and 28 of mm. season one Ancient Medallions and Shoots and Ladders. This time we will be doing episodes 29 and 30 Fight oh, to the Death, Fight to the Death, and Submit to the Master. Oh, the Master? <laughs> Doctor Who is here. Gaga. <laughs> oh, we're so good at this. It keeps bleeding in, Austin. We keep we keep dragging this into into the fucking show. And if you want us to do a Doctor Who podcast, <laughs> then you can email us at, at newsandknockoutspod at gmail.com. <laughs> All right. Any anyway. So what happened last time we were here on Lucha Underground? Uh, episode 27, we had Dario Cueto introducing the ancient ancient Aztec medallions that he spent a large amount of money on and can give pa- and have and can give power of an unspecified amount or right now. All we know is they can give great power. Uh, and, and also on that uh, large amount of money, uh, exactly half of his father's fortune. Very important. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, he gloated to Matanza that maybe these that could make someone so powerful they'd be more powerful than you. And he offered to put in a CRTV in there or something. <laughs> I'm still not over that. First of all, again, what a what a dick move to not even have a TV down there to keep Matanza. I'm still I'm still upset about that. But also, like, I feel like offhandedly saying to Matanza that a combination of all the medallions could make someone more powerful than him is not a thing to say to Matanza that would make him terribly happy. Uh, he's very confident he's got Matanza under his control. It'll be fine. Yeah, I, su- I suppose so. If you keep if you keep your kid brother locked down in the basement without any fucking TV, I guess he, he's going he's gonna to listen to you. Mm-hmm. Uh, then we had uh, the first match, Arrow Star versus Jack, beating Jack Evans, the debut of Jack Evans, and the return of Arrow Star to the yes, temple. The 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 inventor of of lucha libre. As <laughs> yes, well Jack Jack Evans, white boy from Washington State, invented lucha libre. You can go ahead and write it down right now. I That's the, the history books will remember. Mm-hmm. And then. Uh, we also had a the a seven way match for an Aztec medallion between Phoenix, Killshot, Cade, Sexy Star, Pentagon Junior, King Cuerno, and the Mac that Phoenix won. So he is the first medallion holder. 
Uh, it is it is said that the first metal- medallion gives the uncanny ability of of rubber bones on the body, which would explain oh so much. Can we, is this is this going to be like the talismans in that Jackie Chan animated series, and they all got different unique powers? Oh fuck! I forgot about that part of the Jackie Chan series. I always knew there was a Jackie Chan series. I remember watching it. I forgot about the power I watched, talisman. I watched the fuck out of that show. I I watched it whenever I could, but I forgot about the power medallion. Oh my god! So another crossover in this. Uh, roll roll it in with with Legends of the Forbidden Temple and whatever whatever the fuck else this whole ancient medallions thing is sampling from. Mm-hmm. But uh, for now, Phoenix holds uh, the medallion, and uh, Hernandez defeated Alberto El Patron to become the number one contender for the Lucha Underground Championship. Because Johnny Mundo turned heel <clears throat> and put Alberto El Patron through Dario's office window. I still very much struggle to see how that's a heel turn in any form. Yeah, I, I love too the fact that like there's this there's this weird double sided thing going on where the the audience watching at home can still kind of sympathize with Johnny Mundo because we've seen Alberto El Patron dicking on him. But just in the ring, the people who just like randomly come to see the show as casuals and don't, you know, don't know the lore are just like, Alberto El Patron is daddy. Anyone who disrespects him is bad. Yeah, like, it's fascinating that all of the, je- that like, Alberto El Patron comes off like an asshole if you include the entirety of the of his character actions, but the character actions that the live audience would see make he is the good guy. He has done nothing wrong. Yeah. Because all of his interactions with Johnny Mundo are backstage that nobody else saw. Which, like, if that was intentional on Rob Rod's part or whoever the hell was writing or whatever, that that that's kind of cool and 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 brilliant. Mm-hmm. Uh, and another great way to kind of make the audience its own character, but mm-hmm. but also it's so wild to me. There's this wrestling promotion that just did not show the audience the backstage segments, and we're just like fucking whatever, just whatever. Come here and watch it, the wrestling. If it well, if it, it is backstage, then uh, you know those were private conversations that were uh, not yes. filmed. Uh, uh, this is this is this is true. The uh the the underground fight club the 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 kayfabe of the underground fight club must be preserved. Yep. Um. Then we also had uh big big Rick kind of cutting ties with the Mac because it's all because money is better is bigger than family. So fuck you. Yeah. Uh. They say they say blood is thicker than water. Well. Uh. That bread is thicker than blood, so mm-hmm. get on our level, Mac. How about that? How about that? Yeah, fucking uh, sorry, Mac. Uh, Katrina returned, and it revealed that it was all that her entire tryst with Phoenix was in fact a long con, and in fact she was always tr- looking to steal the pow- Phoenix's life powers to power up Mil Muertes, and the only way to do that, and clearly. The only way to do that is to I quasi fake a domestic abuse situation so noted white knight Phoenix would come to her help and then can and then get Phoenix to beat Mil Muertes in a casket match and murder him. Look so Austin. that she can revive him more powerful. Look, Austin, that's the power of the Rakusi. Okay? The death Rakusi. I don't know what that means, and I'm not, and I don't want you to explain it. We're just uh, gonna it, move on. It's because because it's the it's the death rock, but it's also because it's, 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 it's the death rock pussy. <sighs> <laughs> he fell. He fell for the classic blunder mm-hmm. of white knighting for the yep. death rock pussy. This phoenix proves that white knighting is bad, and also. Uh, Katrina has putties now. Phoenix said, "Yeah, yeah. What the fuck is? I guess uh, uh, the 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 many things, the many other pop cultural artifacts that that Lucha Underground continues to dip into, purposely otherwise. Uh, Power Rangers is now chiefly among them. That's before, cool. 
before Katrina saved Mil Muertes from an earthquake and groomed him, she was hanging out. She was in a trash can on the moon. Ah, you know what? It all it all makes sense now. Katrina be like, after ten thousand years, I'm free. Go to time to go lick some fucking corpses. Yes. I wonder if Katrina's putties have like a special little sweet spot where if you kick them, they just like dissolve. <laughs> Well, no, that it's not. Poor. It's like they they fucking freeze and then just like disassemble in midair. But if you stop to think about it, it's really fucked up and like kind of freaky to watch. Like, what is wh- what is this? Just like this mm-hmm. thing is dismembering itself in midair. But but we're going. I I wonder. I wonder if such a thing can be accomplished with the uh uh the the death the death minions. Mm-hmm. Uh, Prince Puma faced and defeated Marty the Moth Martinez in his official debut yes. here in the temple where he basically sniffed Melissa Santos's hair. Yeah, and, what the fuck, Marty? And flapped his his arms like a moth. What? And then and then Prince Puma kicked his ass. What? I still I'm still so far kind of fail to see the appeal. Uh for for Marty the Moth uh Joe Bidening Melissa Santos. Uh, Tejano faced Devari, Delavar Devari again, and it went to a DQ because Devari hired Big Rick to beat up to attack Tejano, paying off yeah. what he was talking about earlier that you know money is bigger than than uh, family. So this he's, is, this, this he's is back to getting paid. Look, that's all. That's he. Look, dude, he's got to fund probably innumerable eye surgery. Like fuck, I don't, I don't, I don't blame him for trying to just focus on getting that bread. All right, I, I sympathize. Med- yeah. Medical bills, man. That shit, that shit's fucked in this day and age. Like, like very true. If if you can get if you get some good money out of a legal Fight Club, based praxis, more God, Godspeed to you. Yeah, and then our main event of the two episodes was Son of Have is is team fun and dysfunctional. Yes, Beat the crew. For the seventy billionth time, for the for the tag titles in a ladder match that was won by Eva Lee, who was on crutches. They're fuck so you, good. crew. Fuck <laughs> the crew, dude. Fuck the crew so hard. I I they're the the thing with the crew for me is like yeah they're they're intimidating villains and and they they're there to be Dario's dirty work boys, but like God, something about them I just find so boring i don't know why i just i can't tell them apart half the time they have the most boring fucking get-ups in the in the universe i just it's fuck the crew get get them out of here i'm glad they're about to go get fed to matanza yeah because because dario swore like you get like one more chance to not fuck this up and yeah, fuck this look up. what they did whoa this up whoa uh, one last thing to note is that old uh, is that Black Lotus finally oh, quit left and is going back to the temple, even though her training was not complete. Yeah, and uh, Chavo's here to 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 talk some shit about that. Yeah, Chavo uh, is part of the Guerrero families, thus is on the run from Mexico, uh, from half the population of Mexico at all times. <clears throat> yeah, I guess that's like just part of the lore. Okay. Yeah, is he was like. I, if you get if you get people the the people off my back, uh, El Dragon Azteca, I'll make sure that Black Lotus doesn't die. <laughs> I mean, hell of a sweet tea. I I just want to more want to know. I still don't fully understand why Dragon Azteca cares this much about Black Lotus, but but I I appreciate his his dedication to keeping her alive, even if it's at the service of fucking Chavo trying to mm-hmm. escape. Hordes of angry mobs? Question mark. Yeah, and the one thing that we know for sure is happening on this episode this week episodes this week is Mil Muertes will be facing Phoenix in a death match oh, after God. after uh, Katrina came into uh, Dario's office and seduced him. But I'm going to be honest; he was more attracted to the death match than the, than Katrina. This is true. Dario Dario sees hot lady, and he's like. Dario sees the chance for blood, guts, and death. He, he's that that man. That man is is all he gets. He gets horny for murder. Dario yep. Cueto, uh, the 
if there is one definite turnoff for Dario Cueto, it is, it is, uh, oh, wait, it's friendship. That's what it was. There's one turnoff for Dario Cueto, it's friendship. There's one turn on, it's murder. What, what a, what a, what a peach of a man. What a good dude. I love him. Yep. So that is our setup for the week. Uh, if you would like to watch the episodes along with us, well, we can no lot we can no longer just direct you to 2B TV. But what we can direct you to, because these episodes are no longer available legally on any streaming service. Uh, if you would like, you can buy all of the seasons on Amazon Video. Uh, oh if, shit! If that interests you, but I'm also not going to pretend that that's what we're going to do. We are pirates now. This is the this is the pirate and pirates podcast. Ooh. Yo, yo ho, ho, yo ho! If you go on the old internet archive, <laughs> the entirety of Lucha Underground is available. Is on there. <laughs> Yarg. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is this is uh uh this this is this is austin he's a pirate this uh, i'm david i am also a pirate <laughs> welcome we're to the and episode. we're pirating next week's episode too actually welcome to the newest episode of the pirates and pirates we're pirating podcast. the next two weeks of episodes actually oh my god we're so illegal this is this is this is the bootleg show uh all bow down to our boots fitting quite well into legs or vice versa regardless whatever we're we're yeah we're not watching we're not we are not buying the lucha underground episodes on amazon i'm just pointing it out i'm just saying that you could do that if you're if you really want to only do this legally you know if you're a fucking narc season one is 35 dollars for the whole season hey listener you want to be a fucking narc and drop 35 bucks on lucha underground for just season one uh Mm -hmm. and and just so you can listen along to our podcast does that is that you want to be you want to be a fucking i mean it's your prerogative i'm just saying narc gotta 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 let you gotta let everybody know their options gotta let everybody know that if they that if they don't choose the right option they're a narc okay (laughs) so see you guys in the back half as we then cut will then be covering uh, Lucha Underground Season 1, Episodes 29 and 30. Alrighty. And we are back. We have just finished Season 1, Episodes 29 and 30 of Lucha Underground. Fight to the death and submit to the master. Fuck. Oh, what the fuck? What the fuck? What is happening? Uh, to to always keep tying Heathers into this podcast. Uh, yes, the, Para- the other thing that will never go the fuck away on this show. To paraphrase Heathers, dear diary, my underground Grand fight, fight club, club wrestling bullshit. has a body <laughs> count. Body count. <laughs> you know what? Yep, people are dead now. At least one people is dead. At the very, very, very least. Yeah, uh, um, and definitely more to come. Yeah, if last time with the ancient medallions was the start of this show getting more supernatural and shit, it yeah. feels like this was a real turning point in this show just getting dark and fucked up. Yeah, what the hell is happening, dude? What am I watching? What the fuck? The greatest goddamn wrestling show of the last 20 years I can't is what you're watching. you with that. It's so good, Austin. Why does it keep being so good? Yep. <laughs> oh, okay. Let's, God let's damn. Let's get it started. Wild shit is happening. All right. Yeah, absolutely. So we start off with Black Lotus showing up with Chavo to the temple. And I do have to have a good laugh at them immediately throwing up some sort of last second justification for why... Uh, Black Lotus is going to inevitably settle this shit with Matanza in ring by Chavo saying, uh, do it the right way with the whole world watching. Yeah, okay, in the ring. Sure. I... Yep. Uh, which, though, you could read into that a couple of different ways. 
We'll get to that, I think. Well, yeah, okay, yeah, fair. Yeah. So that's all that basically was. And then the first match of the episode, Aerostar versus Johnny Mundo. Ah, uh, yes. Johnny Mundo versed in the many different styles of being a leggy boy. Johnny has uh, uh the new new more Johnny lore has dropped in that he has been taking on a lot more fights, not wrestling matches, fights. He's just oh. going to random fight clubs and being like, "Hey, I'm gonna let's go." See, I just have this image of Johnny Mundo going around to bars and just and just starting shit. That could also be the case. Yeah, and you can tell he's a bad guy now because he tossed his hair. Yeah, that and like I was gonna say is that Johnny Mundo felt noticeably more aggressive than he usually does, and he did a lot less flippy stuff. His parkour was far de-emphasized. This is true. He, he still did a lot of ground and pound. But he's not doing ra- he's not doing crazy shit. Yeah, he did a lot more ground and pound and just kind of punching Aerostar in the head. This is true. I would say the the aggression is still there in that this is a man who's clearly very driven and driven mm-hmm. to to do the thing by all by uh, by the skin of his teeth if necessary, but he definitely wants to hurt Aerostar a little more than we've seen in the past. Like like that uh the way he yeeted Al Patron is clearly marked some sort of turning point. And, and shouts out to commentary for really doing a lot of legwork to lampshade that fact. They just kept focusing on his demeanor is changed. This is a different Johnny mm-hmm. Mundo. He's again, the, the, the ability of commentary to tell the story like that, always an yeah, appreciated element. Of course. Uh, this it's the, va- it's the value of good commentary to kind of like oh, absolutely. make sure that the audience can read what might otherwise be a little too subtle. Uh, in yeah, the exactly. They might miss it, be like, Hey guys, this is the thing you need to notice. Yeah, absolutely. They do a good job at like, it's, it's overt mm-hmm. in the way that they keep talking about it. And that that's mm-hmm. what commentary will do. If they really have a, point they want to drive home is they'll just keep talking about the thing fixating on a specific talking point but they're they also don't necessarily hold the audience's hand either like Mm -hmm. they don't say they say his demeanor has changed they don't say oh look at him doing less flippy shit and doing a lot more punchy shit Mm -hmm. they they they're able to open the door for you to peek in and realize kind of what's happening, which I, yeah. I really appreciate. It's like the best kind of storytelling commentary. I mm-hmm. think it's phenomenal. Yeah. And Aerostar gives it his best. He, he does. I mean, and, he's uh, one of the most athletic guys on the roster. So, you know, his big comeback sequences are always a delight. Oh, yeah. He's he's phenomenal. Uh, although Johnny does get his spots in on him. And at one point, Johnny lands something particularly nasty. And I, I did have to take note that Vamp said Aerostars on Dum Dum Street, which uh, I have a very important academic question for Vamp, which is where geographically is Dum Dum Street in relation to Never Never Land? That's 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 a good question. <laughs> Dum Dum Street is in Never Never Land. It's in Never Never that's, Land. That's my theory. That's your theory. Mm-hmm. I, I I feel like Street is a misleading name, and it's actually like its own little municipality. But mm. that's that's my theory anyway. Anyway, I, I don't know. But uh, Vamp continues to wild out on commentary. Shocker. Speaking of which, my favorite Vamp thing of the entire fucking night is Vamp out of nowhere saying on commentary, and there's a drinking game for every time I say brother. Brother, 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 brother. Yeah, there you are for all you people playing at home. <laughs> well, uh, fun fact, Vamp killed, in fact, uh, 23 different people with this little stuff. <laughs> I guess next time I got to keep a brother counter. Yeah, yeah. We need, I well, next time, clearly, we need to play the drinking game. I'll have to pass on that one. I will play the drinking game, and I will spend the back half extremely plastered, and we'll all have a great time. <laughs> I I guess, sure. <laughs> Uh-oh, Austin's getting, Austin's I will, uh, getting terrible I will mo- already. I will most certainly have work in the morning, so I'm gonna have to pass. Uh, th- th- look, we got we got we got like another fucking month before we gotta do this. We can plan ahead. Take the next day off. Bada bing, bada. B- sure. <laughs> Strategery. Anyway. Um, yes. Oh, also one more. Uh, throw, throwing throwing some uh, 
some of the commentary spotlight over to Stryker for a second. Newest addition to Stryker's unfathomable lexicon is Lucha-ness. Yes, uh, it's I, the Lucha-ness. The Lucha-ness. Uh, well, the uh, Lucha-ness so, so, of this episode is off the charts later on. I'll talk about it. The charts. I, I uh, once again have to applaud master of language, Matt Stryker. Yeah. Uh, so, but Johnny Mundo does get the win. Uh, that's not totally surprising. Yeah, he got his finisher rules. The end of the world is such the a end of the world. Win. Does he does he consistently hit it outside of Lucha Underground? No, no, because he has to do it live. But when he does hit it, it's cool as shit. It, it it's it's a pretty fucking great move. I have to say, for the most part, like for for how flippy his shit gets. At least on Lucha, he t- seems to tend to be able to keep his botches under control. So that's it. Nice. Helps no. that it's edited. <laughs> This is an edited oh, you know, show. That's also entirely fair. Uh, but yeah, man, that audience really don't like Mundo. It, I, it's it's fascinating to me. The, I'm pretty sure the, they were chanting chanting that he was a puto. Oh my god! Of course they were. Like I believe that's what I was hearing, but I can't. I can't. I just control. heard a lot of booing. Yeah. So again, this is what happens to the man that dares disrespect. Daddy Al- Al Alberto, yep. Uh, Alberto El Patron. Oh, well. mm-hmm. who uh, so, uh hashtag, is, uh, hashtag is... Johnny Mundo did nothing wrong, yeah. Uh, uh, Daddy Alberto El Patron, who fun fact is uh, still not in jail, yeah. That's yeah, unfortunately, eight, we, we, yeah, we had eight, to kill, we had to kill that bit because the charges were dropped, so it wasn't gonna happen at all. So, yeah, hate to see it. Every once in a while, I'll still lampshade because I'm always forever salty. Anyway. Of course, and still fuck Alberto El Patron anyway. Fuck Alberto El Patron! Anywho, we move on to a a sit-down interview with Vampiro. Those never go, those never turn into shit shows. Vamp is such a shitster, dude. He is. I I wrote down every, I I did a beat-by-beat of this interview, more than I usually do. So, we're going to have it all for what the fuck he was he, he was on for this episode but he's interviewing sexy star and he first asks her about pentagon jr and her response is that pentagon jr is just a bully and she stands up to bullies so and that's what she is gonna do pretty much yeah yeah and vampiro kind of acts scared for her health which I have Mr. a comment Duncan's about that when we her. I have a comment about that when we get to the match. I have a lot of thoughts about this, but well, it, yes. it plays into how their match go, how sexy star versus Van Pentagon goes later. But he's Vampiro is just terrified for sexy star because Pentagon Jr. is out here breaking every arm that he can get a hold of. All so. of the arms, all all of them, every single one. Mm-hmm. And then he decides to pivot to ask her about Superfly. as And he asks her, has the mask match where uh, he beat him and then he had to unmask? Has that affected their friendship? And her response is, she hasn't heard from him. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, no, she's like, she's like, I hear he's still recuperating. So uh, Godspeed, buddy. Well, 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 well. Mm, which, we'll get to the, we'll get to that later. Yeah, which Vampiro decides to do some shit uh, stirring by he he kind of alludes to the idea that she let Superfly get yeah, his arm what broken the by Pentagon Junior. Yeah, what where does that read come from, you piece of shit? Yeah, and of course she pushes back on this of like, what the fuck? I did the best I could, man. I was also hurt in that moment. Yeah, I'm I'm trying over him? here. What you dick? What do you want from me? What do you want from me? Go fuck yourself. Okay. And she pivots back to Pentagon Jr. to say that she feels it's important that she is to be that she is a role model to little girls and she wants to make help have be a role model to them and let them know that they don't have to be afraid. So she refuses to be afraid of Pentagon Jr. despite him being a spooky skeleton guy who breaks arms. God, God, she rules. Sexy Star is the best, as always. Mm-hmm. And Vampiro announces then, right then and there, that Dario Cueto has booked the match 
that Sexy Star versus Pentagon Jr. in a submission match. And he asked her, like, um, doesn't that kind of feel like that's playing to his strengths? Uh, how do you feel about that? <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. To be fair, I don't know why Sexy Star's alarm bells weren't immediately going off of Dario's trying to fuck me or yeah. fuck me over. But her response was that, you know, he she has she knows a plenty. She knows a bunch of submission moves. He doesn't even on, know. Yeah, which I took note of them later. Sure. I I specifically wrote them all down. So we can oh, talk shit. about that later. Uh, we move on then to the next match of the show. Prince Puma versus Hernandez for the Lucha Underground Championship. They talk they talk about episode 29 having a double main event. Here is main event number one. Yeah, okay. Uh yeah. The the uh uh off the bat, still more weird shit from commentary. Uh some there was something about a lot of experts say that Puma is something something fighting champion. I just want to know um which experts exactly are Who? commentary. Who are, who, see, are the, I, who are the comments talking about Lucha Underground? I see uh I see Stryker is uh once again taking uh taking notes from Reddit. Uh mm-hmm. or yeah, that's, or yeah. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Also Reddit, but oh yeah, yeah, you know, we, either way. Squared circle, man. The the, the experts are uh mm-hmm. are are uh, plenty over the, and, the intelligentsia. And once again, uh Vampiro is on a crusade to talk about how shitty Conan is. Yeah, which feels a lot worse knowing that there isn't really a heel turn planned in the long run here. Yeah, and no, not really. It was a lot cooler when it felt like this was building, was building something, something, but it's not really. I so mean, it's it just kind of feels just like continuing. This is just Conan continuing to be, you know, extremely helpful ringside, and Vamp continues to be uh, extremely not salty about it. Yeah, so. Hernandez and Prince Puma is very much a match. I mean, they play into this the house. They've done what they did before where they play into Hernandez being the strongest boy yet. He and is a so, strong boy. I will give him that. He is a very extremely strong boy. Oh, my God. So he throws uh, Prince Puma the fuck around. He he keeps getting Puma up in, in that fucking border. It's a tor- toss. It's kind of a torture rack situation. Yeah. Lot, as well as setting him up for the border toss, which oh, which is a he uses you like he picks him up and then throws him kind of like imagine the dirty dancing thing. Ha! But then baby just gets thrown into the ground. <laughs> That's you know, I want to see that version of Dirty Dancing now. It's it's she fucking goes up and then just gets yeeted backward <laughs> head first. That would be I'm, so fucking. I'm funny, trying to make dude. an effort to describe moves now in case for this. Oh, no, I benefit. appreciate it. And this is the best too. I got. No, I <laughs> love it. It creates it creates striking visualizations austin yes you're 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 creating a vivid tableau Mm -hmm. Uh, a big turning point in the match though is and to be fair this could set up something i think i don't Mm -hmm. think it will i'm afraid uh... but they set up as conan try decides to distract rick knox and Rick Knox. As, Rick as you Knox. do, because Rick Knox allows all of the shenanigans. Rick Knox bees Rick Knox and is distracted for about 30 <laughs> seconds longer than he should have. Yeah, yeah. He's 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 really Conan's like, hey, I fuck, you fuck I want I want to get in there and do kill my boy. And Rick Knox is like, no, no, and I'm gonna pay a lot of attention to you harassing me instead of uh noting the noticing the obvious uh distraction. Set up. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, the uh, the diversion you're creating. Oh, the, what, the, the what diversion the for Prince Puma picks up a steel chair from under the ring. Yes, and Hernandez goes to do what? a suicide dive over the at, at Prince Puma, and then Prince Puma and just Puma him in, him in the head with the steel chair in mid air. That was so nasty, dude. Oh my god! And it's arguably not the nastiest move of the show. No, uh, in that shit. setup. But well, I was like, "What the fuck?" That was so dope, though. Mm-hmm. It was. Oh my fucking god! And so um, they start going back and forth at ringside, and it kind of culminates with, "Is that you know he throws? Is that um, uh, Hernandez tries to throw Prince Puma into the guardrail, 
he leaps atop the guardrail and then dives back onto car onto Hernandez. It was dope as shit. That was so cool. But then it's old so fluid too. Mm-hmm. He, he he gets a top there and he just kind of looks back for a second and then whoop right back yep. right back over. And Hernandez seems none the wiser. It was so smooth. Yeah. Holy but God. Then, unfortunately, Hernandez is able to get the upper hand again. And then he does the border toss to uh Prince Puma onto the apron. Yeah. The hardest part of the ring. Fuck. Very painful. That yeah. Also, um, something I noticed too, slightly out of order here, but um, mm-hmm. or just when Hernandez entered, the crowd kind of hates him too. And I thought, like, why? Because I, I like, you know, we know that that Puma's the the baby face hero champ, but the crowd has not in the past demonstrated a particular bent toward feeling feeling that they have to root for the good guy. They're just here for the pain. And then I realized. Oh, you know why they fucking hate uh, Hernandez? Because he had the audacity to beat Al Patron the, la- the previous week. That probably doesn't help. That's I guarantee you that's exactly why they're booing him. They don't give a shit about Puma. It's all because Daddy Patron got put away mm. by him. God damn. Also, so- also, um, uh, some some stuff from some stuff from early on. Conan, like, mm-hmm. three minutes into the match, is going, like, take him down now, Puma. Conan apparently got places to be. Finish, um, finish him off. It's like, dude, we just off. started. Dude, we just, we just, we just. Start. Uh, again, extremely helpful at ringside. Uh, yeah. okay. Also, okay, best his best not helpful moment was when yes. he's got when Hernandez because again he goes to the torture rack, which is kind of like you get a guy, you basically bring a guy up on your shoulders, and he like gets her, he gets Puma in this position again multiple times in the match, and at one point Conan's like. He's doing that too much for you to not get out of that. And I'm like, yeah. but arguably it would be harder later in the match because you're more fatigued. No, no logic. Only results. I told you this, Austin. He don't, he don't give a shit if it actually makes sense. He just, don't give me excuses. Give me results. Mm-hmm. So, also, the weird fucking line from commentary. I missed part of this, but there was something about, something about trees. And just great commentators out of context line is, Trees don't have legs, but I know what you mean. Uh, love that we have that telepathy thing. Yeah, okay, <laughs> so he was... I didn't get the full concept. line, but they were talk. They were basically, like, you know, using the cl- the common metaphor when you're taking on a big guy that, you know, you gotta He's chop green. down the tree so you, yeah. you take him out at the legs. And they and then for some reason, Conan... Uh, not Conan. Vampiro decides Vampiro to... Way too literally. Yeah, and then yeah, and then he yeah, he's got that telepathy thing going on. No, no, Striker is the one that says, "I love that we have the that telepathy." Striker oh, yeah, that you're right. goes along with it. These two men are just made for each other. Yep. Um. Uh. Yeah. The, the, uh. Fucking fucking hysterical. Also, shout out to to Hernandez getting really incredulous every single time he doesn't get the pinfall on Puma. I know he's face like. Uh-huh. what what is really funny because early early in the match i think vamp says he's like a really mature challenger and i'm like hmm no, mature challenger he... uh having extreme no. incredulity every time it knocks doesn't give him the pinfall pick yeah, one I think they're, they're trying to sell it as like this rookie champion versus this 20 year veteran wrestler but yeah. mature no yeah Hernandez has always kind of been a fucking his... loser has always kind of looked like I've acted like a fucking jet, stupid frat boy jackass. Like that's his <laughs> kick. Big, so, big peaked in high school vibes from Hernandez. Absolutely. <laughs> so the we the match kind of reaches its big conclusion where uh, Puma is able to kick out of a lot of the Hernandez's big old bot moves, and then he's able to basically he kicks Hernandez in the head a lot. <laughs> whole lot whole bunch of times and eventually he's able to knock hernandez back down with a kick to the head and he hits the 630 to get the win puma is despite it all still the lucha underground champion yes oh god i love watching him hit that 630 it's such a dope move it's so pretty it's so pretty it it just looks so satisfying Oh, mm-hmm. good boy. Good boy. Yep. You're doing great. And we go straight then to our main event of the evening. 
Phoenix versus Mil Muertes in a death match. Yeah, Phoenix comes out immediately looking pretty fucking brave and hype for a, a man who's about to get murderized. But okay. Yeah, the, I will say is the, the death match part of it does not follow any traditional rule set that you from that name. It's it's just a no DQ match, essentially. Um, yeah, uh, although there was a line about Dario has requested, no, in fact, demanded that the rest be liberal with their interpretations of this. Yeah, is you are not, is he basically, he's like, don't, basically don't enforce anything, actually. Yep, just, just, just have, just go have fun with it, kids. Yep, and immediately, Mil Muertes comes out in his best goddamn look that Mil, he ever had. Extra scary Mill is here, black pants, no irises, peacock feathers. That I'm his peacock robe is fucking awesome. I he, am horrified. Katrina is here. She's got the rock and the disciples of death as uh as vamp as striker will name them in this match. The putty are, are here with him. He is so fucking cool. He is. I, I gotta say, I am I am a scaredy boy at this point. Oh, Okay, I'm going to use this moment to kind of talk about the match as a whole, is that the commentators do a lot to try to sell this match as being more gruesome than the and than the uh, Grave Consequences match is. And I have a hard time agreeing with that. I, because, yeah, I didn't. Because, like, that match had, you know, Mil Muertes ripping Phoenix's mask and then stabbing him in the head with a, with a uh, turnbuckle hook so not quite but here's the thing i will give this match is different from the grave consequences match and i would like to think this isn't just because because is that i already knew who won both matches but grave consequences like even though it was more violent and bloody it felt like this like back and forth epic where the hero finally gets his win yeah and to me the death match felt a lot more ominous and felt like a lot more of like there's this more sense of foreboding doom and it felt like phoenix never really had much hope in as opposed to how grave consequences yeah this is this is a uh, one where you just kind of figure that phoenix is a, a dead boy and it starts off where he's he hits he he jumps out to attack mill a couple of times, Mill staggers but doesn't really fall. And then he goes to dive at Mill, and Mill punches him out of the air. Yeah. The, 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 he's just denying Phoenix any of his spots. Like, Phoenix mm -hmm. gets some things. Like, he gets his, some moments to get Yeah, it's not, it's not a full ball. squash match, but no, the whole but time, it just feels like Mill is going to win this. Uphill losing battle mm -hmm. the entire fucking time. And so in that sense, I will give the match credit for that, is that it has, it doesn't have the same kind of, I think, hopeful. Completely defeatist air. Yeah, doesn't have the same hopeful air, even when Grave Consequences was much more bloody. I agree. I Yeah, I think you're right on the money with that. But I that that's not to discredit this match at all, because this no. is still a phenomenal match to watch. And another shout out to commentary, like for real this time, they were really working on the lore, like like pushing the lore uh, mm -hmm. here. There there was talk from Stryker about as the match went on. Uh, um, uh, what's her face? Uh, fuck, why can't I? Katrina. Remember? Thank you, Katrina. Katrina and the servants of death walking around the ring in a counterclockwise circle, and he's like, I almost feel like this creating some like circle of power or something. Mm -hmm. Um, which very very like specific thing to denote. But I do appreciate what was being gone for there and, and the fact that, that he was pointing out, again, another thing that the audience may not have picked up on. Mm -hmm. And I, I, told, I told this to David, but it's very funny that like from the perspective of the live audience and the commentators, they have missed so much shit. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's just kind of like, oh, Mill is back and uh, Katrina's on his side again and also Putty's. Yeah, Stryker calls this out is the last time we saw Katrina, she was leading the funeral procession for Mill, and suddenly they're back together. 
Yeah, it, it is fun. The fact I, I I will always get a kick out of the fact that commentary has to act just as fucking clueless about any of this mm-hmm. as um as the audience is. It, yeah, so it, they it, they have no idea how to hand, how to really react. To oh yeah, that that adds to it too. Mm-hmm. Is that commentary the entire time is weirded the fuck out? Like like Striker and Vamp are just kind of like they're clearly concerned about whatever the hell's going on here, and it adds this kind of like ominous uneasy feeling to the entire proceeding oh it's great mm-hmm. yeah and so uh you know we taught phoenix does get his spots in I, I wrote phoenix not quite as good at the rope walk in 2015 uh he does because he sets up mil muertes for his rope walk spot and, and, kinda, and i will and say he, he doesn't quite make it all the way across he i will falling. say yeah, he it happens. He's not as good at it, but the fact that he can do it at all in the year of our Lord 2015 is still yeah, impressive I don't, I don't, as shit. Like I don't, I don't mean to shit on Phoenix or anything. It's like the like the difference is the difference is in 2015. Phoenix is clearly still working on the skill to completely balance, and like it clearly is taking effort for him to stay up there. Whereas in 2020, it just looks effortless. Like like yeah. that's the difference. But he's still able to fucking do it, which is still. Yeah. Goddamn nuts, but yeah, I, I could, I, I did, I did pick up on that a little bit too. I'm like, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that usually is a lot cleaner from what I remember. Yeah, oh, it looks like he's putting effort in. What yeah. sorcery is this? Then I, I, I made note that the referee is absolutely terrified. Oh, everyone's. Like, fucking I don't, ever- I don't remember what referee the name who who's refing this match. I think it's Marty Asias. I think is who the referee is here, but he looks absolutely scared of everything mill is doing and the rope walk was basically phoenix's last hurrah yeah. before he fell to the outside and then mill just kind of killed him for the rest of the way yeah uh the the big meme of the match coming when mill picks up well, phoenix. Before, before we do that he, oh. he gets a chair and murders and murderizes ray phoenix with the chair for a little he bit he does he he hit he hits him with the uh the the edge of the chair to to just mm-hmm. really drive home the pain arena. But yes, then he picks him up and you go ahead. Yeah. So this crazy motherfucker takes Phoenix up the giant stairs to the top viewing area of the temple, takes him to this one corner that we've seen used a couple times. I'm pretty sure Johnny Mundo. It's, it's, and yeah, it's where Cuerno. Mundo and Quer. It's where Mundo yeah. and Cuerno had their spot where they went through the through the um production. Fence. yeah yeah uh so he takes phoenix up there and phoenix is knocked the fuck out for pretty much the entire time except right when he's a, right when mill opens the gate to take phoenix onto like this one landing past the gate on this observation deck. yeah it's like it's like this little closet area yeah. on the up that is to the side of the stage yeah uh phoenix wakes up a little bit and gets down he's like no no, no i don't want to go over there and so he try he tries to fight back, and Mill completely no sells it. He's like, "How and, about no? You're going." Yeah, how about going. no? And then he picks up, he picks up. Oh God, he picks up Phoenix for this for a power bomb. And I and I was like, oh, because I thought Phoenix was gonna get like thrown off the top of this landing. What he? Does, no, we're not gonna actually kill him. Look, well, well, I didn't know. I think I was like, life finds a way. Uh, again, this man is made of rubber, clearly. But but what does happen is that he picks up Phoenix with a power bomb, and I'm like, oh, so he's just gonna yeet him onto the landing first. Okay. Oh, oh boy, does he? He picks him up, he slams Phoenix down, and Phoenix fucking goes through the roof of this closet area, just straight the hell down. Yeah. It just breaks underneath him and he goes all the way through. And I was losing my mind. Absolutely. I I believe this is the first time someone has went through a roof. We've seen multiple times people jump off of Dario's roof. This is true. People but, uh, Dario's window, but yeah, but no, uh, F- Mill sending uh, Phoenix straight to hell through the roof on this one. And everyone is freaking the hell out. My striker literally yells, Holy shit on commentary. Yeah. And they're and all like, he, I don't know what to do with this. Yeah, because the referee is like trying to get the door to the door to this closet space is locked. So as Marty is trying to get through in here to get to Phoenix to see if he could still compete, 
And Matt Stryker throws to commercial with only about four minutes left on the broadcast, actually. Yeah, like, he's, he's like, they're, they're doing a really good job at, do, at like mm-hmm. acting like they don't know how to make heads or tails of what the hell is going on. Again, the, mm-hmm. the really great solid work from, from Vamp and Stryker on, on that front. Absolutely. But yeah, we cut back and, and the servants of death go and break down the door to this closet. And they they carry Phoenix out and they send... carry his body out like a funeral procession. Yeah. And they just chuck the body into the ring. And then Mil Muertes hits the the flatliner mm-hmm. and he pins Phoenix one, two, three. It's and very, then it's very rock over. time, baby. Yep, Katrina. I wrote Katrina licks Phoenix real good. She I uh, I I bet I bet Phoenix is having some flashbacks there, and he's like, "Damn, it all makes sense now." Yeah, uh, you know, she comes and she crawls into the ring, and then crawls over Phoenix. Yeah, shout out to the people in the audience, fucking cat calling Katrina as she crawls into the ring. Like, are you kidding me, bro? Bro, put your dick away for two seconds. We have atmosphere. A man is dying over here. <laughs> Calm down. She lick uh, death yeah. him, and then she stands triumphant mm-hmm. with feet with Mill and the Disciples of Death, and they roll credits. But we're not quite done yet. No, is because Dario is at the cage where with at uh, where at Matanza's cage with the crew, and he's like, "You've disappointed me," and. Somebody needs to pay for this. And Cortez Castro and Mr. Cisco look at each other. And they grab Bale. And they grab Bale. Well, you, you, you said in the front half you're struggling to remember their names. Well, I hope that this makes it a little bit easier it for will, you. It will because, because now I now know that you Bale only, is only need dead. to remember two. Yeah, and I remember that Bale is the one is dead. So that, that, uh, grab Bale. that does help the process of elimination a little bit. Take him to the cage. And Matanza beats Bale to death through the cage. Slash eats his face off. We don't. Yeah, I I I interpret it as as eats his face off personally. Yeah, I I didn't interpret. He literally just punched him to death through the cage bars. But either way, his face is gone because he the the Bale and Mr. Cisco and Cortez Castro have blood all over their faces yeah oh it's uh, this is this is one of those moments you're like oh yeah this is a robert rodriguez production because we never see bale's face as it's getting eaten off but we do see plenty of shots of of mr cisco and cortez castro on either side with just blood effects splattering onto their faces and Mm. and like it has that very like spy kid slash sin city slash 300 camera quality to it uh, uh um, where you're like okay yeah uh, that again once again all makes sense who the fuck is bankrolling mm-hmm. this it's, uh, it's, it's so. very it's very impressive the way they were I, I will say they were able to convey the violence of the scene even though we don't see matanza or bale oh yeah i mean that that's that's rob rod's thing of of mm-hmm. doing so much with so little like, yeah, like that, and- that's and at the very end is that even a speck of blood gets all the way over to Dario, who's on the other side of the of the room. It yeah. gets on his cheek, and he just rubs it off and walks away. So yeah. yes, you know <laughs> I have been hyping, I have been hyping up this show for having death for quite a while now, and they took their time to get there. They really and did. technically speaking, Matan uh, Mil Muertes did die. In yeah, the, but not, in the great not consequences, permanent. but not permanently dead. Bale is permanently dead. This is the last time he will ever be on Lucha Underground because he's dead. <laughs> so wild to me. This is a show with death. This is a wrestling show where people die. <laughs> is Bale like a dude outside of LU? Yeah, he's a wrestler. I'm, I think, uh, let, me, let, me, let me give a quick. Look up at him. See if I can... now he just goes by uh B. Oh, he normally goes by B Boy. It's his big ring name. He's a he was a big indie wrestler out in in SoCal in the two thousands, and he's just dead. Okay. 
Oh, okay. The first man dead, and I can assure you, not the last. Yep. On so, this uh, fucked up show. Rip in peace. And we then start episode 30 with the a, a episode-long arc of Chavo Guerrero and Dario Cueto. Because if if there was some part of you that thinks, thought that maybe this was kind of Chavo Guerrero really showing his his, his capacity to be a good guy. No. Yeah. yeah. Actually, no. He is Chavo's the same, a filthy, filthy traitor. He is the same dirt bag he always is. Because as it turns out, he's always been on Dario's payroll, actually. And he spills the beans about Black Lotus and Dragon Azteca to Dario Cueto. So now Dario knows everything. Yep. And Dario's like, Dario's like, well, name your price and uh yeah. and I'll uh I'll I'll pay you whatever you need to just like deliver her to me on a silver platter. Which and... by the way, before we get to that, is that we get is Dario is stunned to learn that Dragon as El Dragon Azteca is involved in all this. Yeah, so I guess there's a history. Okay. Yeah, and he and Chavo makes the suggestion that Dragon Azteca has a mole on the inside. That somebody in the temple is feeding Dragon Azteca information. And I would love to see where that goes. Oh, yes, more uh more shit to uh to learn about. I do love the deep lore continuing to choo choo mm -hmm. along on this on this damn show. It just it just never stops. I love it. Yes, Dario offers Chavo any price. He starts just taking stacks of money out of his money drawer and just placing it on the table. But Chavo Guerrero, like an idiot, decides to take a non-financial considerations offer where he just, he accepts uh, protection from all of Mexico because remember, he's still on the run from yeah. all of Mexico. I'm just, the entirety of Mexico, I don't understand what the fuck is, is going on with that. But he he's just, just cheated ooped. that many people. All of Mexico wants his ass. So and Dar yeah, around and Dario's the like, section, sweet, I'll do that. He he literally describes what he wants as around the clock protection from Mexico, from the entire country. Chavo, what have you been doing? What have you done? <laughs> oh my god. But Dario oh, agrees Dario. easily, and that is now that. Yeah. Uh and then we cut to the the show proper. Um, Striker start, starting off the show. Um, uh, or Va Vampiro, uh, Vampiro, very early on, shouts out Striker as uh, his friend, his brother, um, also his teacher. So I suppose Striker has joined the prestigious ranks of those who have instructed Vampiro alongside uh, Homer Goddamn Simpson. So congrats on that, buddy. All right, yep. Bam the, continues the to wild out on commentary. This is now yeah, okay. a doodle. All right, so the first match of this, of episode 30 is Jack Evans versus yeah. R. Hennis. The motherfucker Evans has returned. Yep, and before the match starts, Dario comes out of his office and is like, well, we're about to have this match, but R. Hennis, nobody cares about you. You suck. And Jack Evans, you've had one match here in the temple, and you lost. So why should I care about this match? I'm, I think this match is boring. So he suggests that, that to, to try to make this interesting for him, he will put one of the seven Aztec medallions on the line. Yeah, okay. So these medallions are cursed, right? Like, why the hell would Dario... I hate everybody who's not a bad guy who wants to make me zillions of dollars. Cueto is offering to just give away one of these apparently super powerful medallions to one of two men he both considers to be absolute losers. So, like, they're cursed, right? Like, they're, they're, there's a curse. Like, there's some trick going on here. My, my man's got some shit, like, in action. Because he, do he don't do that. That is an act mm -hmm. of charity. And Dario Cueto don't. He don't do charity so that, that that's cursed right they're definitely cursed right mm. Mm. argument could be made uh um also i really need a goddamn chart 
of what doesn't doesn't just actually piss off the audience because this is an audience that will root for just about anything but they don't like they don't like right now Hernandez they don't like Johnny Mundo and they don't like uh Delavar Davari and they don't like Jack Evans and the the reasons for the first two are because they beefed with actually I think for the first three no 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 he hasn't beefed with the, the first two at the very least have beefed with with Daddy Patron which is why they hate him I don't uh, totally understand why they hate Delavar because he didn't beef with Patron right he beefed he's with beefing with Tejano though yeah so I don't know why they hate Delavar uh but they also hate Jack Evans for daring to to say that he invented lucha so they they don't like people being jackasses about lucha heritage and they don't like people who poop on on patron and that's about it uh yeah. everything else is fair game and also yeah. they maybe don't like super rich people i i don't know uh i don't know who's to say i i, I need uh, a guide to the few i need i need to like start creating a list of like what will actually get under this insane bloodthirsty audience's skin yep uh before the match starts, uh, we get a story that sounds so insane from Vampiro that it's actually yes, so, Vamp fucking because Broke before the, the match, the crowd is chanting Gringo, Gringo. at Jack Evans, and yeah. so Vampiro decides to use this opportunity to talk about the history of the term Gringo, which, if you don't know what that is, is a pejorative term used against non Latino people. But usually white people specifically, but not yeah. doesn't have to be by Mexican or Latino people. And so Vampiro decides to take a moment to explain the term. And he gives a story about how uh, during the Mexican-American War, the Americans had green outfits on. And while they were over there, while they were there, the Mexican people would say green, go home. As they yeah. get the fuck out of our country. Green, course, go and it and the crazy thing is that is kind of legit. I say kind of because the Wikipedia page on Gringo gives a lot of possible ways the term kind of came to be. It's one of those things where they don't like, you know, it's 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 a word. It's not like it's easy to pin down like when was the exact first time anybody invented the word Gringo. Yeah. Um but legit one of the x of one of the etymologies given by that is considered a folk story by the wikipedia page is this exact story about the green go home thing yeah what the fuck vamp is actually like kind of right at the very least the, the broken clock he's as here. right he's as right as he could be on this in this instance. holy shit so vamp vamp has spent the past quite a few weeks just being absolutely off his rocker. But this one, which just sounds ludicrous and dumb, is actually mm -hmm. correct. What? I'm here for yeah, it. I were, love the like, enigma David, that is David Vampiro. David couldn't handle it, and I had to go look it up, and I was like, the fuck? Actually, Vampiro was right. Yeah, I heard that. I'm like, okay, oh, that's definitely fake, right? He's definitely bullshitting. And Austin looks it up. He goes, nope. That's okay. Perfect. Good job, good job. Oh, okay. you, you, you got one. Uh, but also, uh, as, so as to not give us any delusions that that he is a commentator of of mm -hmm. high academic intellectual rigor. After all, uh, he then later fucks it up with calling the re the ref lefty, getting called no, out. No, no, this is no. It's the other way around. Striker called him. Oh, lefty. oh, striker. Okay, never mind. Okay. So, so never mind. I guess Vampiro actually is a high academic after all. But Stryker apparently calls the ref lefty, and Vamp calls him out on this, like why he uses his right arm. And Stryker calls, "I like to give people nicknames." And he tries to be like he uses left hand account, and his name he's like his name his real name is Justin Borden, but I like to give people nicknames. <laughs> cool, cool beans. And it, to the match itself, I think the match is fine. Oh uh, yeah. It feels very cool down in, in look, taking these two episodes in in succession with each other. It feels very much like a cool down spot of like after the intense shit that happened at the end of episode 29. This is just like a nice match. A lot of the opening matches on Lucha Underground I've noticed are like that where they start off with things with the kind of tamer matches, something to get you warmed up for for the crazier shit to come. Which but I mean, it's, it's, a, good, it's like, a good format. 
Yeah, I, I quite I quite enjoy it. We kind of start with, with one low stakes, e- ease back into the feel of kind of what we're here for, and then mm-hmm. things can ramp up from there. But we still got a good match out of it. Jack Evans, I quite like his style, and Arjenes is a, is a fun competitor for yeah. him. Um, like it, and, it, it, it's too it's nice it's a nice like two high flying kind of guys in yeah. a way that like isn't doesn't happen the rest of these episodes yeah seriously and it ends with with jack evans getting actually a really dope unique pin yeah call. i don't think i've really seen that yeah before. before right before we get to that i do point out uh with our Hannes with a pop-up kick to the balls oh my god i forgot about that yeah, which I didn't initially believe it was a kick to the balls, but then also Jack Evans started yelling about his testicles. <laughs> so I was like, I guess he did kick him in the balls. <laughs> I love that. Jack Evans, it feels very appropriate for Jack Evans to yell about his testicles. <laughs> yeah, but then Jack Evans, he wins with, it's a roll-up pin, but then he also bridges he, like, back Peter over. bridges himself over Arjenes to keep him down. And, yeah. and I gotta say, after the fact, Arhenes has a great reaction to it because he looks very bamboozled by what just happened to He's him. Like, what just happened? He's like, wait, what the? What, what was that? that? Well, that's not supposed to happen. Yeah, so that the was he- that was kind of dope. The hell was that? Yeah, so Jack Evans has is uh, in possession of one of these medallions. Wonder yes, how is, the fuck that's. He now play has out. the second medallion alongside Phoenix. I got to say giving him a medallion seems like a fun choice just because he is this kind of uh crass ballsy outsider uh mm. and he's just kind of swooped in and now he's all of a sudden embroiled in whatever weird shit they have going on with this yep. medallion. Mm. So that's so kind of dope. Then we have a tale of two locker room fights. Yes. As we start with De- Delavar Davari coming up to Big Rick in the locker room and it's like, hey, dude, I talked to Dario Cueto. We got a trios match tonight. We just got to find a partner. And Big Rick is like, well, what about my cousin, the Mac? And the Mac is like, yeah, okay, sure. Yeah, I'll Mac, not not to be mm-hmm. deterred by the fact that his cousin basically said he'd sell him out for, for the right price. It's like, yeah, sure, I'm down, whatever. I don't, I don't care. Matt Mac is a very trusting individual. He he's, he's willing to forgive guy. and forget. But don't worry, K, B, K Cage shows up and is like, actually, you're not gonna team. Why would you team with Mac when you can team with me? And his his audition, so to speak, is that he absolutely beats the fuck out of the Mac. Yes, it was so cool. I have to say. We were giving the, the cinematographer shit for all try spinning. That's a cool trick. But uh, okay, he's getting some of his. He's getting some of his. Uh, some of some of his cred back after last week when the servants of death showed up above Phoenix. That was a cool shot. And in this, we get a fucking great shot of uh, Cage attacks Mac. Mac starts to fight back, and we get this great lockup they, shot where yeah. their arms are interlocked and they're staring each other in the face. And behind them is like the the window out from from outside uh mm-hmm. kinda, and and like it's the setting sun and just the the orange setting sun beams through and kind of like creates this bright light between the two of them uh above their arms that are locked together that was a really dope shot and i i fucking love that that was yeah. so cool but so yeah but I'm- Unfortunately, despite Mac's best efforts, Cage just continues to just throw him into lockers until eventually Cage knocks over a goddamn locker. Yes, yeah. just topples all the fuck the way down. Yeah, and then he 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 body slams Mac onto the locker as a big final move. And then Davari's like, hell yeah, dude, you can team up with us. Yeah, yeah, he's like, oh, well, you like to murderize people? We like to murderize people? I think we have some things in common. This can work. This can, this, this can work. <clears throat> we're, we're, we're team murderize. It's perfect. And then we go straight to another locker room. You Presumably, like, the women's locker room, maybe? Sure. I did but... notice, like, it looked like the lockers were kind of, like, individually decorated, which, if that's the case, that's cute. It's like Victoria. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. I'm not trying to do the thing. I'm just, I'm just saying. Hey, for those of you who like who like Victorious, it, it remind it reminded me of that. All my fellow millennials, zillennials out there. It's that's more. I'm the I'm a late millennial. It's more zillennial. You're it's, it's a Gen Z. It's a Zoomer I'm, show. Well, 
Either way, either way, I appreciate the detail if that's what they're going for. I want to see what all the locker designs look like, because that's super cute. And also, why the fuck aren't the men doing that? Anyway. Uh, Any, so anyway, we're, Black we're Lotus is in the locker away. room, and yeah. Chavo arrives to be like, hey, so I talked to Dario, and he's gonna, you're going to have your first match tonight. We, all, we got this plan, man, is I will steal the key from Dario, let out Matanza, and then you can kill him in the ring. It's a trap. And thankfully, I appreciate the fact that Black Lotus is like, yeah, uh, I think you're actually full of shit. And just and because or what happens is she turns her back and Chavo like prepares the hitter and she sees it and counters it and like hits him in the face with the locker and then beats the shit out of him. Yeah, I know. Uh, shout out to Black Lotus, like fucking Liu Kang hitting Chavo. Like she just keeps she's, like, blurry and straight. Chavo. Like she sees it the fuck coming. Uh, and also just shout out to the fact that Chavo couldn't keep the trail in his pants for for more than like a day. Like he immediately, like he had absolutely no ability to play. A Did long not game let that shit marinate. He's like, all right, it's go time, baby. I got you right where I want you. Uh, and so much so that uh that the what remains of the crew shows up with him to help black bag black Lotus. and initially they fail she beats the fuck out of cisco and cortez castro initially yeah. as well but then chavo hits her in the back with the kendo stick that the crew brought and that's kind of the end of that and he starts putting the boots to her and they do they for a split second do like a black and white negative shot. Yeah, so I'm like, about- wait, did Black Lotus just goddamn die? No, apparently. No, but he then alive. pulls out the handcuffs and they cut the scene from, scene from there. Thank you. Anyway. There is. And we will get back to that in this episode, actually. So that's nice. Hey, we don't got to wait a zillion years for the next Black Lotus spot again. All right. Yeah. It's so nice to see Black Lotus part of the regular stories in this episode. In these yeah, and not just be like, all right, she got kidnapped. Now what? Yeah, she got kidnapped. And then also we had a long time where it was just like, I'm still training. Just, just wait and just keep Kill Bill montaging. It's fine. We'll, we'll be yep. here. Yep. We're moving forward with her plot. Slowly but surely, yeah. So next match we get we get a, a three on three for the for the trios tag titles, the old TTT, and the challengers come out first. And I kind of realize, you know, maybe the key to beating Team Fun and Dysfunctional is having a team that is equally as eclectic. Because we have Cage, Big Rick, and Delavar Davari, which are just three. They, they are three dudes. They, they've they never really teamed up before. They don't got that much in common. Except oh, for the fact infor- that, that, unfortunately, that they are paying Rick. Yeah, there, there's the problem is they're not, is that Divari is paying Rick. So they're not, they're not as eclectic and dysfunctional. So I mean, to be enough. fair, like, like Son of Havoc and Ivelisse were dating for a while. I would consider that a similar level of like, you know, semi-connection at the very least. So... I don't, I don't know. I feel like, you know, I, I, I enjoy the fact that, like, Dario's just, like, hodgepodging teams for this fucking He will, team. he's gonna throw together any group of three people he can. It's honestly kind of exciting. It creates for some, like, cool, like, possibilities for matchups. Just, like, the fuck anyone can, can, can wander into that, that challenge. It's yeah, but great. then, here, down comes Fun and Dysfunctional. And boy, do they get dysfunctional real fast. Yeah. Oh, also, wait, before the match starts, when, when, when Team Murderize is coming out, Vamp uh, very expressly ex- expresses his, his disapproval, his, his, his disapproval of, of the vices in which Team Murderize partakes, namely. Oh, Delibar yeah. He gets real mad. That, like, he gets big mad that uh, Big Rick comes down to the ring smoking a cigar and Delavari, Delavar Davari comes to the ring uh, drinking a scotch. He gets big so mad. So, Vamp about it. is the clue of the newest candidate for the Straight Edge Society. Clearly. Exactly. You gotta love, gotta love the cult. Uh, but yeah, so, th- but yes, things get, um, things get quite dysfunctional. Quite yeah, quickly. and quickly. Helico starts the ring, and and you know it start it starts off okay. The commentary is just talking about uh, he is the. Uh, I, I have to wonder if these were meant to be puns or not. The they 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 say Angelico is the fastest rising star in Lucha Underground, and and Stryker says something about his ascent. 
something, and I'm like, yeah, he sure is reaching new heights. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, so well, I, I have to do... Also, mm-hmm. speaking of Liu Kang and Helico, I keep forgetting about Helico just, like, screaming, hi-ya! In, during his match. Yes, he, kicked, he, kicked, he at one point kicked Cage in the head, and he said, hi-ya, right before he did it. it a, a couple times, and they're very high fit. So again, speaking of Liu Kang, some great spots from him there. Yeah, but uh, on Helico and Son of Havoc can't get along still. Shocker. And not helped by the fact that Eva Lise, who uh, I'm going to remind you all, is in a cast. Still in a She's goddamn cast. And she is insistent that she tags into the match. She has to get involved. And it's like, and obviously the two guys on the team are like, no. No. And so she gets mad about it and it kind of adds to the problem. Yeah, she gets so mad. She goes and like sits in the audience and he's even kind of bitching to the audience member. She sits next to you. She's like, fucking move over. She's like, she's like waving them off mm. to one side so she can sit down, which yeah, I thought so- was great. I thought that was a fun touch. So the fact that it's a quasi three on two match, it goes the way you'd expect that to go in that sense. Yeah. Where... Oh my god, the team Murderize gets some nasty spots in on the fucking mm-hmm. Big Rick picks up on Helico for, for one of those like upside down vertical holds, and then just casually passes it off to Cage for seemingly no other reason than to just hold him there a little longer and also show off the fact that that's a thing they can do. It's it was dope as hell. <laughs> Eventually, um, Team uh, Ivalice comes back to the match to try to get involved. And I wrote in my notes is that she tries to interfere and stop Divari. And I wrote, you wouldn't hit a girl in a cast, would you? And then immediately after I wrote that, Divari hits her and knocks All her right, off the So apron. I guess we found the answer to that one. Yep. So Divari's in control. It's looking like he's going to get the win. And then Tejano arrives to distract uh, and interfere because to him and Devari yeah. are not over. He is not done with this. Tahano, uh, Tahano to the rescue, I guess. Yeah, I've never been really... happier to see Tahano before. Yeah, that's new. <laughs> I was like, I don't like this feeling. I'm relieved that he's here. Oh no. Yeah. Yeah. But so then that gives them, gives uh son of havoc a chance to recover. And then he what is this functional rise again. Yeah. He hits the shooting star press and the fun and dysfunctional win the match. Yes. I love them. They so, continue I, to beat all the odds and continue to be champion. Dude. I love the, I love like the, the way that, that, that he and, and Helico stand up on the top rope for the shooting star press like this that slow mm-hmm. that slow like bend up of of and and like the arms <laughs> coming up is so cool i love it it gets me every time so yeah yep that's a nice happy moment uh Yay. probably the last, Before, the last, and then, the last, that's where uh, the, last one, the last hat the last happy one we get tonight because mm. Next, uh, Dario was in his office looking over his papers, and Chavo and the crew come in, and they got uh, b- b- Black Lotus bound and gagged. Whoa! So uh, that's uh, that's not good. He brings, he does, he does has brought Black Lotus to the Dario, and Dario's response is that uh, is that he will take her. Is that I have a spot next to my brother, so he never gets lonely again. Oh God. <laughs> cheeky bastard this is, and we will leave it on that note so we're gonna have to wait till next time to fully know what that means uh, but, I so much waiting oh dear uh, then we move to our main event Pentagon Jr. versus Sexy Star in a submission match yes it is time Pentagon of course starts the starts the, the match uh, you know, he tries, we, 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 he tries to cut his promo and devote this match, this sacrifice to his mm-hmm. master and sexy star dared to interrupt him when he's about to hit the catchphrase. Yeah. Pentagon Jr. says, you sly dog, you caught me monologuing. <laughs> you sly <laughs> dog, you caught me monologuing. I which, can't believe it. Which to my response to that was. Yeah, break her fucking arm. How dare she? Hey, hey, no. Austin, no. Be nice to my girl. No, because my boy has got to say Saro uh, Miedo. Miedo. Oh, this is true. This is true. The law, the law demands that he says it. Otherwise, someone got a hit. Uh, also, um, 
as this match goes on, and and of course we're we're, we're talking about the uh, empowered feminism TM of of sexy star, which you know face. Uh, daily reminder that um fuck Ronda Rousey. Yes, uh, they he starts. They try to talk about how uh, how the you know women in sports and good role models for women these days, and they bring up Ronda Rousey as an example of this. To which again I say fuck Ronda, fuck Rousey. Ronda Rousey. So, but moving on. <clears throat> I was getting done to circle our way back to Vampira for a second. Is mm-hmm. I talked about how he kind of acts, kind of fears for her safety. And it's, he continues this notion in this match, and it comes very close to white knighting, if not already there. Oh, he keeps doing it. And it's weird, right? Because, like, on the one hand, I kind of get it in the sense that, like, on some meta level, you're sort of playing into the into this like visceral reaction against a, a man attacking a woman. But also, like in the context of Lucha Underground, like intergender wrestling is just a thing. And yeah. Sexy Star has fought men before just fine. Yeah, and kicked their asses just fine. Like it feels weird to kind of play into this. Like, like you got Vampiro being like, oh man, this ain't right. I can't watch this. It's making me sick to my stomach. And like Pentagon just doing his regular moves, like yeah, slapping her, like chopping her across the chest or like hitting her with a pile driver or something. To be like, fair, the last time we were here, Vamp was also doing that shit too. Oh, Vamp was, yeah. Vamp, Vamp definitely has done that before. And it's just like, it's just kind of weird. Like we're, we're trying to, tell this mess that we're like we're like it feels like it doesn't work with like the kind of we're trying to sell a message of like a feminist hero and in the context of lucha underground again like intergender wrestling isn't uncommon yeah weird so like why are you making it a thing i don't know oh no woman is fighting pentagon jr well, because it's Vamp, and Vamp is wilding out constantly. But yeah, it, it is frustrating to, like, listen to him just constantly white-knighting and, and have that, like, kind of be a mm-hmm. thing that the show doesn't seem to, like, disagree with. Which is dumb. Right. Especially because Sexy Star fucking holds her own in this map. She does. She holds, she, that, uh, she holds the hell up. Um, She's able to she's able to fight back. She's able to, to, to get uh get to the ropes when, when Penta's got her in hold. She's able. She's able to get him to the outside and knock him down. Like this is. She is. She's beaten him before. Clearly capable of doing it again. And like, and mm-hmm. again, they do a good job, kind of having this narrative of of this is still Penta's arena. Like she struggles to to get mm-hmm. the same level of submission hold that he does, and she has to give up on one at one point. It's just simply not enough to get him to the tap, and she has to yeah. recognize that. But but she did have submission moves that she Pentagon does have didn't submission. know. Yes. It's, I wrote them down as she has the front face kneeling guillotine choke, which was pretty dope, actually. She like puts him in a headlock, knee drop, forces his head into her knee, and then like chokes him. It's pretty sweet. A a knee bar with an elbow t- to the back and neck for higher pressure. Um, she does an arm bar that is almost close to the lockjaw that B- Dr. Britt Baker does. And I was like, Yeah, like just put her put now, you gotta put your hand in his mouth. Finish it off. Yeah, yeah. But she, no, she doesn't have the glove, Austin. You gotta have the glove. You yeah, gotta be sanitary. It. But yeah, she gets she fight she holds her own a lot. I think I kinda wanna I kinda like subconsciously kind of compared it to Moon to Phoenix and um Mil Muertes earlier in the fir- in the other episode. And like it's a very different and like it, it isn't as it had the potential to kind of be similarly like one sided, but they definitely played Sexy Star as as like someone who could win this match. Yeah, uh, they and, and and fuck, she gets really close. She uh, does. That's, that's the cool part. She almost gets there. Like this is a this is a match with an arc of like Sexy Star learning and adapting in real time. It mm-hmm. not only does a good job uh, of continuing to power up as a as a legitimate opponent for Penta and like probably his most legitimate opponent at this moment. Yeah, I, I would also... say that. I would say I would say Sexy Star is absolutely his most le- his most legitimate threat yet. Yeah, but also it does a really good job at really making her look smart in ring. Mm-hmm. This is a match that made her that made her look 
intelligent as hell when it comes to like adapting on the fly to her to 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 what's required of her in ring work. It was it was it was a brilliant showcase for her. Yeah. And I mean Penta continues to be very scary every time he gets close to her. I'm like I'm like don't you dare murder my queen. Snap arm arm oh, no. snap. No. 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 Uh also a uh, little little side note. I kind of it kind of dawned on me. Uh there was a, 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 a during one shot where sexy had gotten Penta knocked down on the outside. Huh. Penta shaves his armpits. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't know why. We, we get to the end of the match, and like we talk about Sexy Star having a chance to win. It's kind of implicitly stated that she was going to. Yeah. Because she has she gets Pentagon Jr. in a single leg Boston crab. And she is wrenching it on, and Pentagon has nowhere to go, no way to escape. It seems like he's done. And then here comes Superfly, Sans mask, because again, he lost the mask. Yeah. And it's like, okay, he's back. That's cool. And he attacks Sexy Star. Yeah. He's got Penta colors on. He's got face paint. Oh, no. That thing that Vamp was talking about is was, was all a setup for a payoff. He, is, he in crazy, but he has evaluated his life and he has determined that the person who ruined his life isn't the person that broke his arm. It's the or friend the that demanded that, um, that, yeah, this, mask that this match it's, happened in the first place. It is the person who beat him in a mask versus mask match and then let him get his arm broken. Clearly that it's sexy star. So he attacks sexy star and helps set up Pentagon to put her in a modified surfboard where he, he puts her in the surfboard lock and then like grips her neck for further leverage and she gives up and Pentagon Jr. wins the match. Yeah. Uh that and and uh devastating moment and oh oh Superfly did a betrayal. Also his arm seems to be fine. So okay. I is, I have to wonder if that's know. like bad medicine on the show's part or if I don't like, how how long has he been was it when did they break his arm? Like a month ago at the very wait, most. Wait. Uh, I guess maybe quick, like a month or two, but like either way, a quick, a quick, um, let's see, a quick, uh, bring, uh, look through the list. Let's see, a star versus this mask versus mask. Um, it's, it was the first sexy star Pentagon match, was the one. Now he broke, he broke his arm right after he lost, right after the lost, 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 so the match. that was uh, episode 22. And this is episode oh, okay. 30. So this is conceded so eight, two, two months. months mm. Sure, two months, I guess. <clears throat> yes. So, so but after the match, you know, Pentagon is like, oh, finally, after so long, I'm going to break her arm. But yeah. Vampiro is like, I've seen enough of this. Here, Vamp comes to save the day. Vampiro runs into the ring to attack Pentagon Jr. and save Sexy Star. And these guys have a stare down. Yep. And the crowd is losing start, their minds. They start chanting for Vamp. They want to see Vampiro fight Pentagon Jr. And they, they stare and they stare and they think about it. But Vampiro decides to back off. He's yep. not going to fight tonight. And, and, and Penta looks big mad about that fact. He's big mad. He just prays to this master and is like, I'm going to get that Vampiro. I'm going to get that motherfucker. I'm going to I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get that sexy star one day. And one last thing we get before the end of the show is we get Vampiro in the Lucha Underground bathroom. He's staring at the mirror and the voices. He's just thinking about everything he said on commentary about Pentagon Jr. And he's thinking about himself and how he, he's, he's got his demons. And he, it like this, they do like these screen effects to show like he's kind of he's a little crazy. And he starts headbutting the mirror multiple times and like cracks the bathroom mirror. He amazingly doesn't bleed or anything. Yeah. Somehow. This. Hmm. Weird. <sighs> but you know, this, the stage has now been set for. Yeah. Pentagon Apparently for Vampiro to return to the ring and fight Pentagon jr. Apparently mm. this whole vamp wilding out on commentary actually has served the purpose. Because he's gotten weirder, and I'm just like, huh. But it's all in service. Was it all just in service of 
us coming to this moment? If so, that's goddamn brilliant. And uh, some subtlety I really have to praise. Because, like, I noticed it, but I was noticing it as a meme of just, like, huh, Vamp's just been saying some, like, increasingly weird shit recently. But, like, oh my god, he's actually, like, his demons are coming back. So he's just, he's, he's getting, he's getting geared up for some in-ring shit. Oh boy, that's so cool. I'm so goddamn hyped. Yep. And so we have reached the end of episodes 29 and 30. And again, is this kind of to uh, again reiterate back from the point I started with is that this has been a, this is, feels like a real turning point in the show, going to a lot darker content. Because this is the first murder. Mil Muertes has never looked more scary. Pentagon yeah. Jr. is on an absolute tear, and Vampiro is headbutting mirrors. Uh, Black Lotus is is getting geared up to face off with Matanza, maybe inside the cage after Matanza has eaten somebody's face off. Uh, mm -hmm. We're just all sorts of crazy is 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 happening, and it's it things are getting taken a turn for the worse in the, in the illegal underground fight club. We have nine episodes left in season one. We are gearing towards Holy the end. Shit. Seeds for the season finale are already being planted. And let's uh, fucking go. Oh my god. Uh, <laughs> um, I can't wait to see what comes of the rest of this because this show I, I mean there's no better plotted wrestling show ever mm -hmm. than this i mean the 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 style the format I've, I've talked about this endlessly the style in which they do lucha underground affords them this extra panache to their storytelling that is so compelling and better yet they're really good at taking advantage of that and creating some well plotted stuff both from a booking perspective and then from a writing storytelling perspective this is this continues to be the best thing we watch on this show and i can't believe we're this close to the end of season one and that there's still yet so much more to see just this is still only the tip of the iceberg yep wow uh, wow sorry sorry. Yeah. sorry to have lost my voice somehow y'all no, but fine. that is we will continue on with lucha underground in the near future but for next time we will be finally returning to ecw we skipped, Yay. we skipped our order a little bit here to make it easier on myself at mania weekend but <clears throat> we now return to ecw and the return of of tommy dreamer versus the sandman this time in a cane match in a singapore cane match ah uh, yes the canes that are definitely not kendo sticks but in but almost more importantly, next time we will be discussing the moment where ECW became Extreme Championship Wrestling. Oh shit, buddy! All right, that's exciting stuff. Yep, but that's for next time. Until then, David, hit our plugs. Yes, sir, my friends, my dear friends. Thank you all so much for joining us in yet another phenomenal episode of the Noobs and Knockouts podcast. Whether uh, you are a first-time listener or a returning listener. Thank you so much for being here. For our returning listeners, thank you so much for once again welcoming us back into your eardrums, your eyeballs, whatever. We hope you uh, have had a great time uh, with us once again. We hope you continue to, to come back week after week after week to have a great time with us. If you are a first-time listener, viewer, what have you, welcome. We are so delighted to have you. We here at the News and Knockouts podcast like to think we are friendly to both news and knockouts alike. So whether you are uh, brand new to the wrestling fandom on a whole or you are a longtime veteran of this wild, wacky world, either way, we hope you feel welcome here. We hope this all feels accessible to you. We hope you've had a great time. We hope you want to continue to have a great time with us. If you would like to continue to have a great time with us and you're not entirely sure how to do so, not to worry, my friends, I have you covered. First of all, you can find us on YouTube. We are the Noobs and Knockouts Podcast on YouTube. Hit subscribe. Ring that bell. Make sure it turns a nice little solid color so you get notifications every single time we drop a new episode. Like, comment, subscribe, add us to your playlist. Check out our playlist. Austin has been kind enough to organize all of our arcs and companies, etc., that we follow into their own little playlist. So if you have a specific 
thing you want to follow all the way down. You don't got to do a lot of jumping around. It's phenomenal. And hey, on the more recent episodes, you can see our beautiful faces and check out our awesome kind of like HUD we got going on here. It's very cool, very fancy. The little visual gags we sprinkle in. Oh, the mystery for the audio only people, you know. Uh, but <laughs> regardless, uh, come find us visually and audioly at noobs and knockouts podcast on youtube if you are a fan however of that audio only experience of course you can find the noobs and knockouts podcast on spotify google and apple Podcasts. three of the best places to find your podcast check us all out there like us rate us spotify added a few months back that that rating feature so if you could be so kind as to give us five whole stars and you know just tell people this show's pretty great and on other platforms give us reviews and just let people know hey these guys are pretty cool we would be greatly appreciated. So come check us out. Audio only on Spotify, Google, and Apple Podcasts. And of course, there are the three main venues you can get in more direct contact with us. First of all, of course, is our Twitter. You can find us on Twitter at Noobs and Noxpod on Twitter. That's Noobs, the letter N, Noxpod on Twitter. Come check us out there. We engage in discourse. We drop dank memes. We post every single time we drop a new episode so you guys know what the hell is going on. And of course, the highlight of our Twitter is weekly wrestling live tweeting my friend what is on the docket coming up of course as usual every uh wednesday night on tbs at 8 p.m eastern is aew dynamite the one show a week me and david both consistently watch live so we will be live tweeting that in addition uh we have the impact wrestling a wwe and aew pay-per-view events uh upcoming On April 23rd, Impact Wrestling will be putting on Rebellion, one of their four annual wrestling pay-per-views. There's a lot of great matches on this show. Um, My girl Rosemary competing for the Knockouts World Championship. She's probably not going to win it, but I can hope and dream. (laughs) Hey, Knockouts. Hey, that's our thing. Yeah, it's very funny that David came up with that name without knowing about the knockouts division. So I I will never be over. And I can't remember if I've told this story on the show before, but I will never be over the fact that when uh, when I went to get your poster signed by Britt Baker uh, and I said uh, I I asked her to make it out to Austin, the best knockout she gave. She just gave me a look and goes, you know, knockouts an impact thing. Right. And I'm like, yeah, 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 it's a it's it's, it's a podcast. Don't worry about it. Yep, I love Good that. Shit. For a whole second, she thought you were an idiot. It was yeah, hilarious. I mean, hilarious. I am, just for different reasons. Yes. Sorry, Dr. Britt. Mm. Yep, uh, but then that's for Impact. Upcoming for WWE on May 8th is WrestleMania Backlash. It used to be called Backlash, and then they were like, what if we put the WrestleMania name on top of it? Cool. Yeah. Um. That obviously, like WrestleMania was like this week. They they don't have any matches for this yet. But yeah. again, May eighth, we'll talk about the matches for that as it comes along. And then AEW, a double or nothing. One of their four annual pay per views on May 29th, uh, coming up right now. Again, it's too way too early to have actual matches set for this show. They still have the Battle of the Belts uh, mini show to do coming up. But we do know that the that the final for the men's Owen Hart Cup Memorial Tournament and the women's Owen Hart Cup Memorial Tournament will be taking place on May 29th at Double or Nothing. So we have that to look forward to. And that is what we have coming up on Twitter. Shit, all right, nice and easy. So yeah, be sure to check all of that out. Uh, we have a great time over on the Twitter. The The live tweeting is super fun. We like, we, we like dropping hot takes and memes and shit and just generally... Mm-hmm. Austin and I are pretty fun times to, to spend your time watching wrestling with. Austin's great at the analytical shit. He's very smart, very insightful. I just do my usual color commentary, pseudo funny bullshit. So just either way, come come hang with the, uh, hang with us at Noobs and Knox Pod on Twitter. Then, of course, there is our email address, Noobs and Knockouts Pod at gmail.com. That's Noobs, the word and this time, Knockouts Pod at gmail.com. Come say hi to us there. Tell us what you like about the show, what you don't like, things you want to see more of less of requests for what you want to see arcs uh eras companies wrestling tangential media whatever uh come yell at us for our hot takes or praise us for our brilliance or or just say how much you like hearing our sweet dulcet tones week after week whatever it may be come say hi to us we would love to say hi back noobs and knockouts pod at gmail.com and of course finally there is our patreon we are also the noobs and knockouts podcast on patreon 
One dollar a month gets you early access to episodes and a shout out at the end of each episode. See y'all next time. Hasta luego.